are the issues keeping CEOs awake at night? And how can business leaders help shape a more sustainable world that works for us all? I'm Halima Hedin. Welcome to Global Perspectives from KPMG. a CV many people would envy, a former Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of Finland, a former MEP and Vice President of the European Investment Bank. I'm delighted to be joined today by Alexander Stubb. Alexander, thank you for joining us today on Global Perspectives. Given your extensive experience in geopolitics and economics, can you give us a quick sense of where you think the world is right now? It's a slightly different it's a slightly dangerous question, actually, because I'm working on a book which is called The New World Disorder. But I'll throw you my thesis in, 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 gra- in sort of short form. I, I think the 1919, 1945 or 1989 moment of our generation. In other words, a moment when the world order is changing, the old one has died and something new has yet to be born. And I would put the starting date for all of this to the war in Ukraine, starting in on the 24th of February uh, 2022. And in 1919, of course, they established the League of Nations, got it wrong because we ended up in a World War II. And then in 1945, they got the balance of power between the Soviet Union and the United States pretty much right. And in 1989, we sort of thought that history would end and we would all convert to liberal democracy and market economy and, and, and globalization, but it didn't really happen. So now is really a 10-year period of disorder after which I would argue that a new world order will be established. What it'll look like, we don't know. Now, after COVID, Davos was back in the spotlight with some criticism that it's become out of touch with the issues that the world faces today. You're particularly active at the World Economic Forum. Why does it matter to you? And do you think any of the criticisms are valid? Well, I think it's one of the most important fora that we have in the world where actually all kinds of different stakeholders from politics and from business and from civil society and from academia and from activism actually get together. I've been there since 2009 pretty much every year and enjoyed every time. For me, it sort of gives a jolt for the scene of the next year, what's going to happen and what's cooking. Uh, Is it important? Yes, it is. I mean, people forget that a lot of great initiatives have come from uh, Davos and the World Economic Forum. Something like Gavi, which deals with the global distribution of vaccines, was actually born as an idea uh, in Davos. Usually what happens is that the people who are not there dislike Davos and the people who are there just absolutely love it. But I think it's still one of these wonderful international global fora where decision makers and stakeholders uh, get together to try at least to solve some of the common problems that we have in the world. Now, you've touched on the sheer scale of instability facing the world right now. For our listeners who might be sitting behind a desk trying to fathom how to plan ahead for their businesses, what advice do you have? Well, my big thesis is that we will be seeing three power centers. One is the global West, roughly 50 countries of the world, which is trying to preserve the liberal world order. The other one is the global East, led by China, roughly 25 countries that want to break the current liberal world order. And the one that's going to decide this game is 125 countries from the global South. So my advice uh, is that the world is going to probably split into different orders, one in Europe, one, one in Latin America, one in Africa, one in Asia. So you have to be very agile and flexible to deal with these things. And probably for all the CEOs and the investors, you have to understand that geopolitics is back. So things that were supposed to bring us together, like energy or trade or information or technology, it's actually ripping us apart at the moment. So you have to be very agile in when you are. If you're in the West, Russia will be isolated. If you come from somewhere else, Russia will not be. 
But I would focus a lot on the big geopolitical tickets at the moment, which have to do with technology, with climate and with demography. Okay, Alexander Stubb, thank you so much for joining us on Global Perspectives. Well, I'm joined now by Bill Thomas, KPMG's Global CEO and Chairman. Thanks for speaking to us, Bill. We heard from Alexander Stubb about how the world needs to become even more connected to tackle some of the big issues we face today. Is that something you agree with? Thanks, Helen. It's great to join you again on this second series of Global Perspectives. I mean, these have been fun, and I'm really looking forward to another season. So thank you for working with us on this project. But to answer your question, yeah, you know, I definitely agree with Alexander. I mean, the big issues of today are just that. They're big. ESG issues like climate change, social and economic inequality, and changes in society like technological innovation, economic turbulence geopolitical turmoil, to name a few. I mean, these all require many different organizations, many different institutions working together to help support solutions. And these issues, they create a lot of uncertainty. They create a lot of demand from stakeholders, and that's not letting up. So there's good reason for business leaders to seek out ways in which they can work together to learn from each other and make better business decisions. Alexander's a big presence annually in Davos, and it's an important date in the calendar for you. Why does the World Economic Forum matter for business leaders today? You know, KPMG has been a longtime partner of the World Economic Forum. And like the reason why is we see a lot of value in that multi-stakeholder approach, working together with others on complex problems. I mean, one example is the stakeholder metrics that we developed with the forum, other members of the big four and business leaders to create. We worked really, really hard. These non-financial disclosures, they included greenhouse gas gas emissions. They included pay equality, board diversity, amongst others. And and since its release, we've seen a lot of momentum for non-financial metrics. Most recently with the International Sustainability Standards Board publishing its very first set of disclosure standards. If adopted, businesses align behind them. I think these standards and everybody thinks these standards have the potential to reshape how we quantify the value of publicly uh, traded companies. I mean, decisions made by boardrooms, decisions made by investors would be backed by better, more transparent and more comparable information. And that helps everybody to focus our capital markets on issues that really affect all of us, benefiting more and more stakeholders around the globe. Big changes like this, I mean, they start with forums like WEF and other similar institutions that bring together these different perspectives and backgrounds into the room. And that starts the conversation that leads to action. And we can't let you go today without talking about ESG. Now, the last time we spoke, you outlined how it was becoming the watermark for everything you do at KPMG. How's that strategy going? And do you have any tips for other CEOs who might be struggling with tackling such a broad set of issues? Well, Hella, I'm proud to say that ESG continues to be a key priority for KPMG, as it is for so many of our clients around the world. I mean, from our perspective, a key example of this is changing reporting standards, including key ESG indicators like climate risk disclosures that I mentioned previously. Many businesses are making these disclosures already voluntarily, but in some cases, they're being mandated to do so. And I strongly believe that ESG will only become more, not less, of a priority for CEOs. I think stakeholders are going to continue to demand more action. And I think KPMG is well positioned to provide expertise and provide access to experts from different fields working seamlessly together under one roof to help them reach their goals. I mean, ESG remains right at the heart of everything that we're doing at KPMG. And if anything, it's becoming increasingly important given the sheer scale of crises and challenges that the world faces right now. Bill Thomas, thank you for joining us on Global Perspectives. I'm Hala Mohiuddin. Thanks for joining us this month. We'll be back again soon with another edition of Global Perspectives. In the meantime, you can listen to all of KPMG International's podcasts by searching for KPMG on your podcast platform of choice 
or by heading to kpmg.com. <laughs>